Alright, so today we're going to talk about some of the best gaming laptop displays you can buy on the market from some of the best gaming laptops that you can buy on the market. So the laptops we're going to be comparing here today are starting with the Asus Zephyrus G14. So this is the world's first 14 inch mini LED gaming laptop display. So this is a QHD display on the G14 with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio for 1600p. It's got a high refresh rate of 165 hertz, um, high color gamut of 100% DCI-P3, 504 dimming zones and you have a multi-zone dimming switch so you can actually switch the dimming zones off um, that's sort of a special feature that asus laptops only have that allows you to basically get rid of any of the blooming that you might experience when you're doing daily tasks like browsing or checking emails stuff like that whereas in content you turn your multi-zone dimming on now you're getting that excellent contrast and brightness that mini led is known for this one tops out over 600 nits of brightness which is still very bright next here we have an oled display this is the asus zenbook pro 16x OLED. This laptop is kind of a unicorn. It's really hard to find for some reason, but I was able to get one. It also has a very unique display. This one has a 3.2K display, so it's not quite 4K. It's not quite QHD. Um, it's somewhere in the middle there. 120 hertz, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, and it's a touchscreen with 550 nits peak brightness. I'm not really aware of this display being anywhere else on the market either, so that's really cool to see. A couple differences between a mini LED and OLED, at least with what we're seeing in laptops, is that, you know, mini LED, of course, gets much brighter, while OLED has perfect blacks every time with no blooming. So both have their trade-offs. You know, OLED can have burn-in. A lot of the times it doesn't have uh, FreeSync or G-Sync for some reason on laptops. That usually also means no advanced Optimus either, which is a pretty big convenience and that sucks to miss out on. It can feel pretty dim, especially when it's a full screen bright picture because there's usually like an auto brightness limiter in OLED panels and they're usually on glossy screens. Um, I know for some people that's an issue. So that's another thing with OLED. And if it's a touchscreen, OLED like the one here on the ZenBook Pro 16X. It has like this weird screen door effect on like bright white backgrounds. It's really hard to describe but it's like you can barely like faintly see this weird like digital kind of like looking through like a see-through like um, screened in patio. But I noticed a lot of laptops are moving to OLED, at least gaming laptops in 2024. It looks like some of the Zephyrus models from Asus and the Blade 16 are going that route and I kind of wonder if they just did that because it was new and shiny shiny because there's nothing else new really coming out for 2024. No new GPUs and the CPUs aren't really too big of a deal, especially on the AMD side. So maybe they just needed at least one feature that was different that they could hype up. And that's why they're moving from mini LED to OLED. But honestly, who knows? You'll see here, each one has their trade-offs. Me personally, I prefer mini LED, but as we're looking at these, you'll kind of see why hopefully even, or maybe not. Either way, I think both are fantastic. Also, it seems like some of the OLED panels for these 2024 laptops actually do finally have free sync and g-sync so that's at least good to see but yeah anyways speaking of mini led the next laptop we have is the razor blade 16 um, that one is a high color gamut mini led display with over a thousand nits of brightness and this razor here has a 4k display so 16 by 10 aspect ratio and excellent contrast but it has no multi-zone dimming switch so you're kind of stuck with blooming in regular tasks although a lot of that also just comes down to the dimming algorithm itself and we're going to take a look at that. And then lastly, we have the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i. This one features a 240 hertz IPS display. So it's the only one here that's a regular IPS. And you might notice that when we go over these displays, but the contrast is going to be a little bit lower. And it also has 100% sRGB, but it does not have a higher color gamut. So it doesn't really go far into the DCI-P3 zones. And that's going to definitely hurt it a bit in HDR. But we'll take a look and see how much of a difference that really makes. So all these laptops either have a 4080 or 4090 and a pretty high-end CPU in them as well. So these are all expensive, kind of class-leading gaming laptops. Some people out there really don't care about display quality, they just want the best performance possible, while others like to have a more balanced experience between display, fan noise, typing experience, things like that. So today we're just going to focus on displays. So let's jump right in. I'm going to bounce back and forth between footage caught on my professional camera and footage caught on my phone because it's really hard for a camera to really pick up what the human eye would see, especially in dark environments like this with a bright screen flashing at you. So 
that's why I'm going to be kind of bouncing back and forth between the two because it really will help highlight certain aspects that one camera does not capture over the other. So first we're just starting with some HDR scenes. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is how bright that Razer display is. Just look at the reflection off of the keyboard, how yellow and vibrant that is. Compared to the Lenovo Legion on the left, it looks very dim in comparison to all of them. And then also notice how the OLED over here on the right, um, the colors, the yellow actually looks a little bit different. It looks more orange almost. And it's hard to say why that would be. It could just be the camera or just a difference in panels, color calibration, things like that. And also now check out this owl clip. So again, that Blade 16, the owl is just popping off the screen almost. So this camera angle really is highlighting brightness over everything else. And that's where you're seeing the brightness of all these panels come into play. Another good scene here is this gecko. You can really see the brightness difference between the G14 and the Legion here. The G14 is definitely brighter than both the Legion and the OLED screens. Also, the OLED screen is looking a little less vibrant as far as colors in this one as well. Same here with the bird. Obviously, the Blade 16 is the brightest, but the G14 isn't too far behind in brightness, and then the OLED and then the Legion. Okay, and now when I turn the ISO up on my camera, we are going to lose some of the brighter details, but we're going to see a lot more of the contrast, so how dark these screens can get. And as you know, OLED always shows a perfect black screen. Mini LED can dim things to pretty much completely dark. You know, the usual problem with this is some occasional blooming around bright objects, and we're going to check for that here compared to OLED. And then IPS displays, since they're edge lit, are never going to hit that same level of contrast, and we're going to see that here as well. So the camera settings like this pay attention more to the black levels than the actual picture on the screen, because it's just going to be a little overblown on the camera. So starting with the chameleon clip here, uh, you can see that the Legion, you know, it now stands out like a sore thumb. You know, you can tell it's not as bright either because the chameleon should be losing a lot of the color here. Um, instead, you know, it's, this is more like how that contrast actually looks in person compared to the others. Um, it's never like a fully black screen. There's always like a, a light present, um, which I will admit, once you've used mini LED and OLED, it is really hard to go back to IPS for this reason alone when you're playing games or watching movies that have dark scenes in them and you see that kind of just bright backlit grayish background it's it's so hard to go back to that when you're used to like a higher contrast ratio so here again with this bird the edges of around the bird are pretty much black on the oled pretty dark on the mini leds maybe not perfectly black and then just kind of gray on the legion same with the fruit on the screen here um it looks pretty much black around all of the oled and mini leds and then just kind of gray around the legion's ips display here's another one where you can pretty much see the OLED's black levels a little better than the mini LED, um, the vegetables on the table. And then one of the standout clips here is like the spool of fabric. So you can see the Legion just, this is where it really sticks out like a sore thumb the most of any of the scenes. Same with the potato or whatever this thing is here. Like it is clearly obvious how the contrast is so much better on mini LED and OLED. Again, with the sparklers, clips like these really do highlight where this newer panel technology comes into play are scenes like this with sparklers, stars, black backgrounds, smoke, things like that. So you tell a huge difference there. Just to highlight this a little better, I turn the lights on in the room. Again, this will sort of highlight the contrast, giving you a more realistic approach when it's not a completely dark room. Some people think that you can only see the benefits of OLED or mini LED in a dark room, but I would have to disagree because look, even you know when there is some light in the room, you can still clearly tell tell which displays have more contrast here. And when it shows like the bottles on the screen here, you can really see the Blade 16's brightness come out. I feel like my phone almost exaggerates the contrast even more. Um, you can see in the scene with the popcorn that it's pretty much perfect on the OLED, but then the Legion the IPS display is very noticeably less contrast. Um, one thing my phone also does is sort of exaggerate the blooming effect. If you look at the OLED on the right versus the G14 on the left, you can see sort of a halo around the subscribe now. Um, but if I make my phone focus, then it becomes a lot less obvious. And that's kind of more how it actually looks in person. The blooming is actually not nearly as bad as you would think. But a camera just always makes things look worse. But that's when you're going to notice blooming the most is like white text on a black screen. You know, thin, bright objects on a dark background is where you will see blooming the most. Whereas like a busy, busier scenes are really hard to notice it. Here's another angle from my phone in a bright room. You can see the reflections from the OLED display. And then here's that bird clip again in a bright room. I'm trying to focus 
focus more on blooming. So OLED has none. Don't really see any on the mini LED either in the IPS display again. And then the spool is another one where you should see some blooming on mini LED since it's such a bright object on a dark background. Um, really, I still, on camera, you sort of can see some blooming around these, like the potato thing here. That's just not there on OLED. You know, then as the exposure goes down, it becomes a lot harder to see it. And that's more how it actually looks in person. So, however, I do think some people are just more sensitive to it than others. This popcorn is another scene where you should see some blooming. Uh, when it hits that high exposure, you kind of do, but even still not too noticeable. Now, the peacock feathers actually do want to talk about for a second. So this is really where you can see that difference in color gamut between the IPS display and mini LED. Just even an IPS display can have a higher color gamut than the legions here. So look how much more the feathers just pop on the Blade 16. Like just the vibrance of them is just crazy. And this is HDR. So it's really taking full advantage of that color gamut. Whereas the legion, when you don't have a wide color gamut and you move it into HDR, it actually makes things look a little more washed out. But yeah, the difference there is crazy. Same here, even with the clothes, you can see such a more vibrant pop of color off the Blade 16. And then I'm checking for blooming again by sort of going on the edge of the display. You can kind of notice it a little bit more around the sparklers. It's still not crazy noticeable. Obviously, there's none though on the OLED. And where you're going to notice blooming the most is actually just browsing, using your cursor on a dark or gray background. See how on the blade, when I'm moving the cursor, you actually see a little glow that kind of moves with it. And then same with the G14. With my cursor there, I'm moving it around. You can see dimming zones kind of moving with it. And then, of course, you know, on the OLED display, I'm moving the cursor and there's nothing there. It just looks pretty much perfect because there's no dimming zones. And like I said, with Asus, you can turn that off, which is such a nice feature to have because if you are browsing and you don't want to be distracted by that, just turn it off, you know? On the Blade, unfortunately, you don't have that option. And this is a cool little clip that really just highlights the importance of the multi-zone dimming switch. So like the G14, for example, here, you know, I can turn the multi-zone on and off with just this hotkey and look at the difference in the black levels when I do that. When I turn multi-zone dimming off, it's basically the same as the Legion now. In fact, because it's a little bit brighter, it that back backlight is actually a little more noticeable on the G14 than it is the Legion. But the second I hit that multi-zone dimming switch, now I'm getting those mini LED black levels and it looks much closer to the OLED now. But it's just crazy to just switch it back and forth and see the difference that it makes. But at the same time, it's nice to be able to use your mini LED almost like a standard IPS display if you really wanted to. All right, and here's where we're starting to see a difference in the dimming algorithms of mini LEDs. So I have the Flow X16 on the left here and the Razer Blade 16 on the right. You can see a little bit more blooming around the mouse cursor and the YouTube play bar area, but what this doesn't actually capture on camera is that those are also just brighter objects and that's why it looks to be like it's blooming more. Um, it's actually, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but it does look worse on camera. It doesn't necessarily look as bad in person. The Flow X16 makes the smaller details pop more um, with, and this is the 2022 model model here. Whereas the blade will sort of, when it's like a smaller white object, it'll sort of dim it to sort of hide the blooming. And it does a pretty good job. And I will say as a side note real quick that the Blade 16 actually comes in two flavors of mini LED panel, and that's one from AOU and one from BOE. Now I've heard from a lot of people that the BOE panel has a lot of problems with like lines going across the screen and the dimming algorithm just not being very good. And luckily I have the AOU panel here and that one seems to perform really well for making blooming very hard to notice. And now if we look at the Blade 16 next to the Zephyrus G14 on the right here, the Blade on the left, this is another example where the G14, it looks like it has a crap ton of blooming here, but it's just the exposure of the camera again. But you can see the dimming zone moving around the mouse, which you can't really notice on the Blade. But again, the G14's mouse pointer here is just way brighter than the Blade. The Blade's mouse pointer is getting dimmed. Um, it's hard to explain, but really that mouse pointer is almost like gray on that screen. Um, if you were to see it in person, it doesn't actually look white like it does on the G14. Now, if I change the exposure here, you're going to see another little weird artifact that comes from a dimming algorithm. And this is just something that seems to only happen on the blade. But as I move the mouse cursor up and down, just on the side of the laptop, you can see the algorithm kind of start to give way a little bit. It's like the algorithm isn't really factoring in the mouse cursor here. So it's kind of making it brighter and then dimmer and then brighter and dimmer as you go up and down the edge of the display. So I just kind of thought that was interesting that I found this weird little bug while I was doing this. Um, but I mean, that's a very minor thing. And for the most part, you won't 
really notice that. And to be honest, this was the first time I ever even noticed that myself. You can see when I pull up an image on the display here with the honey that it's like normally it would be pretty easy to see a glow around it, but the stimming algorithm does really well, especially with big bright objects and it just, you really don't notice the blooming. It almost looks exactly like the OLED to me in person. And if anything, it even pops more than the OLED because it's so bright. Another area where mini LED will sometimes start to give way is at extremely low brightnesses. So you'll see here when I turn the Blade 16 down to like 10% brightness or below that, that bright objects like these white backgrounds really start fading into like a black hole. Um, whereas on the G14, this one's dimming algorithm handles low brightness a lot better. Sure, it doesn't get quite as dim as the Blade, but like at least the dimming algorithm isn't giving out. And then lastly, here are just some pictures I took um, to sort of try and find a difference between the mini LED and the OLED. But honestly, other than a little bit of color calibration, the OLED being slightly more red and having less yellow tint to it, the contrast is almost identical. I mean, in the popcorn here, you don't really see any blooming, even if I zoom in. Same with the sparkler picture. All these screens look pretty much black, except for the Legion. Um, <laughs> this one probably makes the Legion look the worst here is the end of the video with the thank you for watching message and it's uh that difference is just crazy i mean it's like a, a medium gray versus actually complete black on the blade 16. you know my final thoughts here like i said these are some of the best displays on the market i would really love to see lenovo in the next year or so pursue more mini led or oled displays on their laptops on their gaming laptops and i would love to see more manufacturers besides just asus implement multi-zone dimming switches because that gets rid of the blooming effect that so many people complain about at least during the times where you're going to notice it the most, like when you're browsing. And hopefully we can see these options expand into a more affordable range. You know, when all these first came out, they were pretty close to the same price, other than maybe the Blade 16 being the most expensive here. Um, and then over time, they've all sort of gone down and gone on sale, you know, $300 off here, $500 off here. So it's really been kind of all over the place price-wise with these displays. But personally, I would pay more to have this on the right versus the one on the left. How much more would I pay? I don't know. It, that sort of comes down to what other parts of the laptop that I like. Maybe I like the GPU more on one or the, the CPU better on the other, or my, maybe I prefer battery life, so I might go for the G14, you know, stuff like that. So, but overall, I mean, some people are, I feel like a little too harsh on mini LED, but I feel like it's kind of the best of both worlds with very little compromise. Like it's to the point now where I pretty much never even notice the blooming unless I'm purposely looking for it. But when I'm playing games, I don't notice. But what I do notice is the insane brightness. The brightness difference between mini LED and OLED is just crazy. I never have to worry about burn in. And yes, your laptop OLED screen will probably burn in after a few years. Like it's pretty much inevitable unless you're taking extremely crucial care of it. But you know, there's just so many static elements when it comes to using a laptop daily. I mean, think about the X in the top right of your screen, you know, um, your taskbar, your scroll bars, like it's a lot different than using OLED for a TV where there's way fewer static elements. There's a lots of movement. You're watching movies, content. You're not on pages that have static borders that have static icons like you don't really have that on a tv versus a laptop so yeah in my eyes i would say that mini led is the winner here uh, but that's just my personal take i mean i would love to hear your take on this do you wish that there were more mini led options on the market maybe at lower budgets do you wish there were more oled options on the market or are you cool with ips displays and maybe you just like that let me know in the comments below and once again everybody thanks for watching uh check out my other laptop reviews if you haven't yet and be sure to like and subscribe if you found any of this information useful Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.